Hi, welcome to uh, Rick's Redstone Ranch. This is part of the Minecraft Circuits in Real Life series. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the very, very beginning, the basic building blocks, what makes a circuit and how we can basically control them and the properties of wires. So in our setup right here, I've laid out a redstone block, a torch, a switch, and then a couple switches that we're going to wire up in a, in a couple different configurations. And so let's see here. So what we're going to do is there's the redstone brick. This is the closest thing that we have to a battery. So if I wire up some redstone to it, it starts firing them up and activating them. Activated redstone has the shape that like, it looks like it's a little bit on fire or sparkling. It has like a basically, it's emitting um, a particle. But when it's not connected, you'll see that it's a little darker. It's a kind of a red-black color. And that red-black color is um, you know indicating that it's not on or activated yet. But as soon as I touch the redstone wire to an object that emits power, it lights up the whole thing. Now, one of the aspects of this is that it actually has a distance. It can go and push energy a certain length of, uh, uh, of wire. So in Minecraft, that length of wire is about 16. So I have like one, two, three, four, five, and then what I'm going to do is just extend this out and we're going to see how far this goes before we run it out. So you'll see that and actually each of the examples it kind of just gets a little less and less bright towards the end and once you finally get to the very last one it actually is no longer lit and looks like it's off. So that turns out to be about 16. Now every redstone item that sort of inputs or outputs um, like switches and torches and redstone blocks they actually output energy as well so if I um, look at my redstone torch my redstone torch not only outputs light but it's also outputting energy so it's going to power redstone as well and what we'll see is it's actually going to power the redstone just as thoroughly as the redstone block did so you can actually create circuits and not have to have the battery element just because all of our inputs are going to emit uh, power as well. So I'm going to do that connector and there and you can see exactly the same distance energy flows. Now let's take a peek at this lever. And the lever you know, it'll say, let's find out if it's off or on. If I press C here, it's in the off position. And so now I've basically uh, I'm going to do that whole wire and I'm going to build the whole wire out same length as the other wire but what you'll see is you know it's just simply you know it's not in an on position and uh, it's still not on and, you know it's not going to turn on until we actually flip it but what we want to see is how much actually activates when it finally hits the on position so when I press that alright so we have a whole length of wire in the off position I'm going to come over and I'm going to activate it. Boom. And now it's activated. And now it's emitting as much energy as the torch and the redstone block. So this is basically the length of wire you have to work with for a simple circuit inside of Minecraft. And in, in real life, what this is doing is it's actually sort of completing the circuit so our positive and negative are connected in one big loop. And the amount of energy we have to work with is finite. but what it will do is it'll do a certain amount of powering. So in, in Minecraft we've got the that our inputs send out power and our output here sends out power but we need to, we need to hook them out so that hook them together so they work together in some way. So in this case I'm gonna put this lever in place and then I'm gonna put a redstone torch on the opposite side of the, uh, the brick. And you'll notice that I can't put redstone right below the, the torch. I'm trying to put it there, but I can put it the next brick out. So that is actually powering it. And in fact, that power is now powering this particular row. Now, let's draw this line out as well. So we're going to go as far as this particular circuit will let us go. And let's see, dun, dun, dun. And we're back here. And we're still going good. Let's see. Oh, 
and one more, one more. And, and you'll notice this case, it's one block further, and that's because the redstone torch is actually one block further in the sequence. So these ones with the, with the sand is just one block longer. But here we go. So now you'll notice there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, we've got that in the on. I'm going to flip this. That goes to off. We've got this to on. Pretty good. So let's see. I'll set there. So now the other part is that I had that redstone torch in place. So what, what happens if I don't put the redstone torch there? I'll just put this in. And you'll see that it's actually not powered. And so instead of going out to the end of this setup, I'm going to actually just go in to go the short distance. And in the short distance, I'm going to activate the switch. Oh, creeper. And uh, hit C. And so now it's on when the lever is down. And then it's off when the lever is up. But because we have a torch on the opposite side, it actually creates an opposite behavior. So what we have is a not operator. So the not operator will be the opposite. And so we're going to explore that further later. But the next thing we want to explore is actually the button. The button, if I hit C here, you know, it's, it's temporary. It goes to whatever its status is. But how do we tell what it does? Well, let's put some redstone there because you know whenever it activates, you know it's going to do something. So if I put a little redstone on the opposite side of this block, you know what I'll do is I'll extend it out so you can see it a little more. So that when I press the button, we should be able to see the status of that. So what we've already what we're learning is that when the button is pressed, then the redstone turns on. When the button is not pressed, the redstone button is off. So what's going on here is that we're only emitting the energy when the button is pressed. So what, we, so what we're doing is we're kind of learning, you know, what happens, what the state of the energy is by the different types of outputs. So in real life, if I have a button in my circuit, I have two wires that are separated, and when those wires are connected, they turn on. So in this case, we just turned on our, uh, our circuit. So now I'm going to do is just going to extend this wire as far as it can go. And see, you know, like we're in the off position here. Da -da -da, that's in the off position. So, let me just keep extending the wire. And I'm actually going to extend it out all the way to um, this little corral here. I have like a little corral for horses and things. So if I extend this all the way out, you know, I'm now right up against what would be the gate. And I can manually handle the gate. But I want to see, okay, can I actually power um, that gate from a button from this distance? So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to hit the button here. It's going to fire, and you don't hear the gate turn on. So that actually means that the gate is in the off position. Now let's figure out, what, do we, what can we do here to extend this energy? I want to get that closer. So actually, I want to do something really simple, which is that I know that I need to make it closer so why don't I just build another button, and I'm just going to make the button closer. We'll just do the simple solution, hit C here. All right, C is my activate, and so I press that, and let's see, was that close enough? Hmm, not sure yet. So, down, nope. Okay, so one of the things to do is, like, since it's a temporary button, well, we want to do something like extend it out. We want to know what it is so when we go explore. So I'm going to actually take the button off. I'm going to say, well, this is a good idea. We're going to use a lever here. The lever is same off. And oops, let the lever back. But I want to change the lever. Now it's firing things up. And we want to see. And this is what we do when we're making circuits is like, okay, are we actually touching? Are we connected? And it's like one, two, three, too short. So, just as a simple thing to do, is we can go, we want to become three closer. So that's one, two, and then here's three. And let's just rebuild this. I'm going to C, create that, and I'm going to close off of that. Now, if I put the lever here, the same thing. And let's check 
to the gate open. We can run down the way and we can see the gate is open. And if I go back, I'm going to go and say, all right, let's take the lever off. And now let's put the button in place. If I look down there, it's closed. I can't see. The gate opens, gate closes. So it's just a quick little thing. And I mean, this is what you use for doors, all kinds of other stuff. So this is the really basic, super beginning. Uh, and we're going to add on and we're going to be a little more, we're going to show how like we can light the torches because the torches in our world, like in, in, in reality, are going to be like our LEDs. So we want to control the torches and turn them on and off. And we want to hook up our wires and we're going to hook up our batteries. And we're going to make all of that work in real life circuitry. But just to recap, the idea is that the redstone block is like a battery and it's going to emit energy. It's not emitting light. Um, in real life, the buttons and switches, what they do is they're part of connecting things up with redstone. So they actually don't emit energy in, red, in real life. But what they do is when the circuit's completed and looped around, they actually make a closed circuit, which would then do things like turn lights on and turn motors on. And then the, the last part here is that um, in real life, we have a certain amount of energy that goes through our wires. And if you make a circuit that's really, really long and you have a big gigantic wire, the energy is not going to push all the way to the end of that wire. The electrons simply will actually have enough resistance in the amount of wire you have to stop going through. All of our circuits are small enough and the wires are short enough that the resistance of the wires aren't going to be a problem. But we're going to learn about the resistance and, the, and the, 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 when we power devices and we put devices into the world, um, they, they take a little bit of energy and they take a little away. So the more LEDs we put in, uh, the, the more energy that's consumed and essentially the same idea that we run out of power and I can only power something within a certain length becomes I can only power something as long as I have enough oomph or amperage to make that happen. So anyway, I want to thank you all. Uh, for checking out this first video and we're going to do a few more and we'll build this whole area out and we'll make it a downloadable world and all kinds of fun stuff. So anyway, thank you and enjoy Minecraft circuits in real life.